Welcome to episode 40 of the D Hard House podcast. My name is Alicia and I'm coming to you from West Texas. This is my knitting and fiber arts related podcast. If you are a new viewer, thanks for tuning in. And if you're a returning viewer, thanks so much for coming back. I really appreciate all of you who watch this podcast. <laughs> so today is a gorgeous Sunday in West Texas. We have actually had some rain and cooler weather here lately and it's tremendous. Um, the grass is so green outside and it's dreadfully humid but I will take the rain where I can get it. So yeah I'm sure we'll be back to the dry sunny weather anytime now but I'm going to enjoy the rain while I can. So yeah, <laughs> you can find me on Ravelry as Liddy Knits 2. You can find me on Instagram as Read Knit Run. You can find my shop on Etsy. It's called D Heart House Creations. And you can follow the shop on Instagram at D Heart House. We also have a Ravelry group for the podcast called D Heart House Podcast. Just search that under groups at Ravelry.com. Join in for show notes, knit alongs, giveaways, etc. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, so um, we have upgraded our internet router here at the house, uh, so we've been playing around with technology. I had some internet problems on my laptop this morning, which is where I record these podcasts, so yeah. But I think we're over all of that now. Okay. So, yes, um, I totally recorded episode 40 earlier this week, and I don't know, I never got around to editing it, so I thought, well, that's, I'll just record episode 40 again. <laughs> I'm so crazy. Okay. So, like I said, this is my Knitting and Fiber Arts podcast, and if you're not already a member of the D Hard House podcast group, you should be. It's free to join. I think all groups are, but I feel like I really want to emphasize that, that all you do is click to join. You don't get any spam email or anything like that. You just tune into the group as needed, so... So what's going on in the D Heart House podcast or Ravelry group? I have a couple of make-alongs going right now. They are make-alongs for blankets. We have the Cozy Couch make-along, which is all about making adult-sized blankets, and the Cozy Crib make-along, which is all about making baby blankets. Uh, the rules are in the respective threads. Uh, basically, it's all about finishing blankets. So I don't care when you started them, as long as you finish them in 2018. Both of those make-alongs end at the end of this year, so December 31st, 2018, at midnight. That will close. I'll probably close it on January 1st, 2019. Because, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so they're make-alongs. So knit, crochet, sew, weave, cross-stitch. Uh, <laughs> yeah, any any craft is acceptable for making blankets. So don't feel limited, please. <laughs> All right. So those are the make-alongs that are currently running. I have a knit-along coming up for fall called... All the shawls fall. 
and that is going to run during the fall season, which is September 22nd through December 21st. And it's all about knitting and crocheting shawls. So I call it a knit along, but crochet is extremely acceptable. <laughs> um, it's just going to be all about making shawls. And I don't really care when you start them as long as you finish them during the knit along dates. So if you have some shawls going right now, just hold off on finishing them until September 22nd or later, and then you can enter them in the knit along. Yeah. So basically knit a shawl, any pattern, any yarn, any size, doesn't matter, knit a shawl or crochet, uh, take a picture and post that photo in the finished objects thread. Uh, each post uh, that you submit gets you an entry into the drawing at the end for the prize. <laughs> So uh, what can get you extra entries if you knit one of my patterns? Yes, so I have a shawl pattern already out there called Daydreamer. And I have recently re released another pattern called Serendipity. And Serendipity is free. Yes. So, I am a person who knits on a budget, and there's nothing wrong with that. So, for those of you who are huge fans of free patterns, I have one of those available. And my co-host Marjorie is here. Marjorie is our two-year-old black lab. She just finished eating her food. And... I like recording from this side of the room because when she does come in, you have a chance of actually seeing her. <laughs> she likes to sniff the yarn so much. It's hilarious. I'll sniff it, and then she'll sniff it, and then it, then it goes on the shelf. So. <laughs> hey, Marjorie. Oh, you good girl. You good girl, huh? Yes. That was nice of her to come in. So, um, yes, yeah, so the all the shawls of fall knit along has not started yet. It will start September 22nd. But for those of you wanting to make the most of it, you can start early. So I feel like announcing it early. So, like I said, I have um, a new shawl pattern out there called Serendipity. This pattern is available for free. Yes. So if you knit the serendipity pattern, you will also get two entries into the cal. So you'll just post your photo twice to get two entries. Um, yeah, so I have my finished object right here, my serendipity shawl. It is written for two colors. I can't remember which way it goes. It's written for two colors, but for one of the colors, I used a mini skein set. And it was a gradient mini skein set from White Birch Fiber Arts, and their yarn is amazing. Just dropped my current whip. Okay, so yes, there is a solid region and a stripey region, and in between... Uh, when swapping here, it is intarsia knitting, so you, yes, on the back side, I think it looks so cool. Uh, when you switch colors, you need to wrap the two strands around each other so you don't get gaping holes in the middle of your work, and I just love how it looks like a dashed line just running down the middle, so. This is the wrong side, this is the right side. Yes. Anyway, um, yes, it is a triangle shawl. And it is large. I did block this out. Um, in fact, I'll put a picture in right here of blocking this shawl. Marjorie is always a big help around here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love the stripes. I love the color change with the mini skein set. Um, you could make this a Franken shawl by using up your scraps. 
You could use two solid colors, one solid, one variegated, some speckles. I mean, the possibilities are endless. And that's what really excites me about this shawl. So um, the pattern is really simple. It's a four row repeat for the entire shawl. So you just repeat until you get the size you want or you run out of yarn or whatever. <laughs> uh, so the pattern is super simple. Um, it's completely adaptable so you can make whatever size you want using whatever yarn you want. And I think that's really cool. So um, yeah, this is this is the Serendipity by D Hart House Designs and that is available on Ravelry. So Ravelry.com. Um, yes. I am not going to wear this shawl because uh, it is rather warm in here right now. Yeah. So that is my only finished object. Um, well, I have another finished object, but it's a secret. Yeah, I am really, really enjoying designing patterns, and um, yeah, I finished another one, and I'm not going to give any spoilers, but you'll see it when it's ready to be shown. <laughs> yeah, I'm super excited. Anyway, I'm horrible at keeping secrets. I'm drinking some black tea with Splenda. I am a Northern Michigan University grad. That's where I got my bachelor's degree. That's right. I'm now in Texas, but I'm from Michigan. Anyway, uh, can we just segue for a second to talk about making it on NBC with Nick Offerman and Amy Poehler, which is an amazing show. I watched the first two episodes last night on the Fire TV and yeah. First of all, Nick and Amy, hilarious. They make the show so entertaining. Number two, there are two guys on there from Michigan. What? And one of them is from Grand Rapids, Michigan. I am from a little town called Howard City, Michigan, which is not too far from Grand Rapids, Michigan. So when I found out he was from there, I literally screamed and was so excited, Michael came running in and was like, is everything okay? Anyway, it just makes me really excited. <laughs> when, because I am from such a small place, and to hear of someone making it onto this show, who's, now I'm not from Grand Rapids, but I'm from a place near Grand Rapids, so it just, it was exciting. Anyway, the show is amazing. No spoilers here. I'm not going to give anything away. Uh, making it is a crafting competition show. And if you haven't seen it already, check it out. It's very lighthearted, happy, um, really enjoyable. Like I said, Nick and Amy make it so funny. Uh, so just be prepared to be prepared to sit down and, and laugh your butt off when you watch the show. So It was hilarious. And I love Parks and Rec, which Nick and Amy were in. So it's just, it's almost the same dynamic, but now truly them, not their characters. So it's great. Okay. Thank you for indulging me on that segue. <laughs> so, um,. Don't run over your your whip with your rolly chair, cause that would be that would be very bad. Okay, so um yes, that's my one finished object. I do have a hoe, a half object. I have finished one of Michael socks. There it is. Mhm. Mm um, I wove in the ends. Look at me go. I started the second sock. In fact, um, I will show you, show you that here in a second. Um, yeah, this is, I'm, 
I knit this toe up. Uh, one by one rib on the top of the foot, plain stockinette on the bottom. I tried something new with the heel. I added in a little bit of a gusset and then did the short row heel and then gusset decreases. And then one by one rib all the way around the leg of the sock. So yeah, you can see the patterning there. And I don't know if you can tell the gusset. I mean, you can kind of see this where I did some increases and decreases, but it's really subtle, but it adds just that little bit of extra room that I've been wanting. So, yeah. Uh, the yarn is Patton's Croy, which is probably my favorite sock yarn of all time at least right now. I've not tried all the sock yarn in the universe, but of the sock yarn that I have tried, this is my favorite. Uh, yeah, it's very durable and holds up really well. The color is Eclipse. Blues and grays, very manly, very appropriate, so yeah. So I have the second sock, and of course it's in a Star Wars bag. Uh, this is one of my bags. Uh, D Hard House Creations. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Again, toe up. I just made it past the heel. I said I can't podcast till I finish this heel. Because showing a sock in progress while you're in the middle of the heel is really annoying. And I'm always scared that I'm going to drop stitches. Yeah. So... Anyway, it's turning out really well. I'm excited to finish them. So all I have to do is just one by one rib all the way around up the leg and then, uh, you know, knit at the same height as the other one. And then I'll be finished. Yeah. This is my mindless knitting project where I don't have to think about anything because it's super simple. And, uh, yeah, you can, maybe you can see, okay, usually, usually when doing a short row heel and you fold the sock in half, maybe I'll do it with the finished sock, let's do it with the finished sock, usually when you fold the sock in half at the heel, okay, that it will look like the toe usually right where it just comes in you're doing the short rows right you get to your certain then you increase back out for the other side of the heel okay so the biggest width is the width of the sock and it immediately comes in but since i added sort of a gusset to it she, she scared me Okay, since I added <laughs> sort of a gusset, it actually comes out and then in when I do the short rows, which is interesting, <laughs> has a very interesting look to it when folded. And it's, it's kind of silly how much of a difference that little bit of room makes uh, when putting the sock on. So I'm a person that likes my socks to be snug on my foot. I don't want it so tight that it's cutting off circulation, but I want it to be snug on my foot. I don't want loose fabric inside of my shoe. I, honestly, that drives me nuts. Uh, can I get that status report, Miss Security Girl? Just some kids, huh? Okay. I'm sure it was just the neighbor kids playing outside. Um, so, so I want my, my socks to be snug. But I have noticed that when I knit my socks so that the foot and the leg are nice and snug, this heel, this part right here, 
on the top of my foot right where the heel is is super tight so I do need that those few extra stitches with the gusset to just give me that little bit of room but only in the heel section not everywhere else in the sock so so far I I am loving this new technique um, and I will keep you guys posted <laughs> on on how well it keeps up but yeah I love the short row heel when knitting a sock it's easy for me to I have it memorized so it's easy for me to do and uh, you know I don't have to cut in later to add a heel I don't have to do the heel flap and then pick up a bunch of stitches uh, I love knitting a short row heel, but I wanted that little bit of extra room. So, yeah, I just do a few increases before I get to the heel section, do my short row heel, do uh, then do some decreases on the other side to get back down to the original stitch count. So, super simple, and uh, yeah, I'm really liking it so far. <sighs> That's crazy. The heels are different on these two socks. Look at that. I will let you know how this goes. <laughs> what? <gasps> I just noticed that. Look how different these heels look. This looks like some kind of polygon and this looks like I don't even know. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> I did two different things. Whatever. He won't notice. Unless he watches this podcast. Okay. It'll be our secret, guys. Thanks. Alright, um, oh my gosh, I totally lied. I do have other finished objects. They're not typical things like socks and shawls that I would talk about. So, yeah, I forgot that those were finished objects. Okay, so, yes, nowadays I primarily knit. However, my first craft was crochet. I love crochet. So I I don't know why, but I just all of a sudden decided I really got to clean the bathroom. And mainly what I need to do is clean out that bathroom closet. The bathroom closet has all our medicine, shampoo, soaps, towels, uh, you know, makeup, nail polish, just just all of that is in that one closet, which is a good sized closet. It has a lot of shelves in it. It's a great storage. However, <laughs> with great storage comes, ah, oh, just throw that in the closet. Yeah. So it got to the point where I couldn't find the cold medicine anymore when I would start to feel symptoms. And I had it all organized where like the first aid kit and the cold medicine were right up front so you could just easily go in and be like, you know, do I need to bandage up a bloody wound, but I don't want to sit through a bunch of things and get blood all over it? Yeah. So, I felt the need to clean out this closet before school started when I actually had time to do it. So, that's what I did. And, of course, when cleaning out the closet, I, you know, decide I need to make some improvements to our organization. I'm so crazy. All right, so we have these really simple plastic baskets that I got from the dollar store. And I love the dollar store. They have, you can buy all kinds of things and walk out, walk out of there only spending $30. And even if that thing doesn't work how you wanted it to, it only costs a dollar, so it's not a big deal. Anyway. So we have these baskets from the dollar store, and I love them because, you know, I can cluster things together in the closet. I can put all the medicine together in one. I could put all the, you know, razors 
in one and etc. Okay. So <laughs> I was looking into sort of making some updates to our bathroom to make it not look so eclectic and <laughs> to make it look more coordinated. Okay. Anyway, this is my way of doing it by crocheting stuff. So I took these baskets and and I like them. I like that they're they're sturdy, they're easy to clean because they're made out of plastic, which is really nice when you're storing things like cold medicine in them that might spill. And I did. I had to I had to wash a few of them out. Um but they're really short baskets. And I didn't really want to go out and buy all new baskets for the closet. Um, cause then for what I wanted, it wouldn't be at the dollar store. So then we're talking at least $7 a basket for like 10 baskets. I'm not going to go spend $70 on baskets. That's just silly. So what did I do? I took the existing short basket and I crocheted onto it to make it taller. Right? I mean, I would have crocheted a whole basket, but then you don't get that sturdy, plastic, easy to clean surface on the bottom. Yeah, whatever. Um, so I used worsted weight acrylic yarn because uh, I'm not going to use expensive wool to do this. Uh, I single crocheted around the edge, just looping through the openings on the basket. Can I get it to focus? Anyway. Yeah, so I just single crocheted around using these openings on the basket. I chained around for the corner. Just I chained and made sure it wrapped around this corner to get the length I needed. And yeah, I just alternated a single crochet row, a double crochet row, single crochet, double crochet, making sure to end with a single crochet because it gives it a nice edge. Anyway, so yeah, I did this on three baskets because it's kind of time consuming. Uh, <laughs> it was interesting to coordinate my hand around here with you know, not having a flexible bottom to it with this rigid base. But yeah, and then I uh, sprayed this with starch to give it a little more stiffness. Uh, yeah, and and there we go. I get my taller basket. Um, it's still going to be really easy to clean. And uh, yeah, it just kind of pulls everything together a little bit more. So that was my random <laughs> my random project that I was cleaning and in the moment I was like, oh my god, I have to do this. Like this is gonna make such a big difference. Yeah, right. Whatever. I like it, don't get me wrong. But it's not like life changing. <laughs> in the moment I'm like, oh this is gonna be life changing. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so I threw in a crochet project and I just took this dollar store basket and added to it. Yeah. Uh, I really like it. It was fun. So, yep, that I finished three of those. Um, I didn't want to bring in all three because they are being used for storage. So, and you know. So when I finished that and I finished organizing everything in the closet and on our shelves and, and whatnot, um, of course, then I was like, oh, you know what? I need to make more washcloths. <sighs> we need more washcloths in this bathroom. It's needed right now. <laughs> so I made a washcloth. Whatever. <laughs> I need it right now. I have to do it. It's going to make such a big difference because we have so many people over. Not. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. I love these washcloths. Um, 
I primarily use them to wash my face uh, at the end of the day, wash my makeup off. Um, and yeah, they're my favorite. So this is grandmother's favorite uh, pattern. Uh, garter stitch, right, knit diagonally. And uh, yeah, I have the the pattern linked on my project page. Um, so I started a project page for all the washcloths I might knit this year. And I'll just put them all in there and, you know, add up the yardage as I go. So, yep, this is a uh, crochet, crocheted knit. This one is knit. Out of, I love this cotton. I still have a lot left. Excuse me. Uh, so I can definitely make more. I love this cotton. This is from Hobby Lobby. Is this the first time I've used this? No, I have other washcloths in this. Uh, the color is dark denim. 306 dark denim. And I like this color. It is a really nice dark blue. It's coming up very well on screen. So, yep. Um, so, a washcloth, some baskets. I just... I don't know why I was obsessed with the bathroom that day. It just it had to be done. Everything had to be done that day. Weird. So, yeah. Okay. What else do I have going? So, uh, Dad's sweater, I had him try it on yesterday. And it fits them really well. So today I am going to pick up stitches for the collar and hopefully get the collar done today. And then maybe start the button band. I'm really excited. I need to pick up buttons. Mm, when you guys knit button bands, this is probably smart. I should probably have the buttons before I knit the button band, right? That way I make sure the buttonholes are the right size. Yeah. That is probably smart. <laughs> okay. I am, I gotta write this down. We're going button shopping. Okay. So that finishes uh, the knitting and crocheting section. So now what I want to talk about is what's in the shop. Yes. So in the shop, so D Hard House Creations on Etsy is where you can find my shop. I have some new bags and some new yarn. Now, it is, I don't know if you can tell, it is a cloudy day today and has been for the past few days here in West Texas. Uh, so my lighting is not amazing because I use natural light. So what I did is I took video and pictures of the yarn that I'm going to show because it's really hard to get the colors to show up well on camera and even harder when I have bad lighting. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to be talking about it, but I'll have like video and pictures going on screen. So, so we'll talk about the yarn first. So I have a new mini skein set up in the shop. It's called Once Upon a Time, based off from the TV show Once Upon a Time, which I absolutely enjoy. It's, it's, I don't know what to say. It's enjoyable. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I dyed these five mini skeins. They're 20 grams each, so 100 grams total. And the colorways are uh, let's see if I can remember what order I filmed them in. <laughs> so Emma is the pinkish red, uh, color because she has that red jacket in the TV show for so long. Uh, the purple color is Mary Margaret. The brown color is Mr. Gold. It's brown and gold. Uh, P.S. The actor who plays Mr. Gold definitely one of my favorite actors. He is so talented. Uh, the blue color is David and the teal color is 
Henry. So, uh, yeah, I kind of went with the main family, if you will, uh, for this mini skein set. So they all have gray and gold throughout and then a different pop color um, in each of the mini skeins. So they coordinate really well together. Uh, I really, oh, I really want to knit up like a serendipity shawl with that set uh, to, and see the color movement, but, but have that gray and gold throughout. Oh my gosh. I might do that. Um, yeah, so the, that mini skein set is up in the shop and available. Uh, and in fact, I love the Mary Margaret color so much with the purple and gold that I dyed a full skein for myself. And I, I don't know, see the colors aren't coming up very well on screen. This is not doing it justice. So I, I think I need to dye another one because I think I want to knit myself a cardigan out of this, but you need to alternate skeins when you're using hand dyed yarn. So I think I need to, uh, I think I need to dye up a second one because it would take at least two skeins anyway to knit a cardigan. Okay. But I just, I wanted to say that because if there are any colorways in the mini skeins that you would like a full skein of, just send me a message. I'm happy to dye up a full skein for you in any of the colorways that are posted in the shop. Okay. Uh, for example, Mary Margaret. <laughs> Uh, so I also have new bags in the shop, so I'll just show those really quickly. Um, on all my bags, you get to choose the type of closure, either snaps or zippers. Um, I have noticed most people like the snaps, you know, probably because yarn doesn't snag on snaps. Um, I'm a person who prefers the zipper. Um, but I figure I give you guys a choice and it's kind of more of a personalized bag for you. So I have two sizes. I have short and tall. So the difference between short and tall is just, there we go, is just the height. They have the same size base, which is very generous. Uh, it's just the tall bag is like, what, two or three inches taller? That's the only difference. So, in the short size, we have seeds. Again, my lighting is not amazing. Maybe I shouldn't hold all of them. Um, yeah, I I love gardening. I have a bunch of plants in the backyard. One of them being tomato plant, which is humongous and totally loving all this rain. Anyway, so yes. Seeds comes with a sewn in handle, my tag, and on this one, the interior is this brown. Yep. There we go. Cool. All right, so seeds. So I have that in short and tall. Okay. And we have some sheep. Oh, love this bag. Oh, okay, so we've got some colorful sheep here. Oh, yep, so cute. And then the interior fabric is polka dots, and they're colorful polka dots, and it coordinates really well with the sheep. Yeah, so I have this in short and tall. They're so cute. Um, and then I have just a short, I started some Halloween bags because we're getting there, you guys. Um, so this is R2-D2 from Star Wars, dressed up as a ghost and all his variations. And then on the inside, we have orange with black polka dots and no focus. There we go. Yeah. So 
very Halloween. Uh, yeah, so the bags, I should have brought that other bag. Anyway, okay, so I made myself one of these short size bags out of some really fun fall fabric. And I think I have a bag out of this fabric in the shop still. Um, oh my god, they're so cute. Like I said, I, I like a zipper on my bags, so I have a zipper. And I do put fabric over the end of the zipper. In fact, it will match the interior fabric of the bag, which is fun. And I mostly want to use mine because I don't want to, I don't want to muck up the new bags. So on the inside, you can fit a full skein of yarn fits in the bottom. Okay. So when you cake up your yarn, two cakes will fit in here side by side with some extra room. Yeah. So this is really great for socks. Um, in fact, if you have a sock project in here, you'll have a lot of extra room. You can throw a notions pouch in here, you can throw your phone in here, you could, whatever. Um, and I really like that the base will hold two cakes of yarn because some of us knit color work socks. So if you're knitting color work socks, you've got your two balls of yarn, no problem. Okay. Um, my serendipity shawl, actually I kept in this bag. So I had the two colors going. I had the full mini skein set in this bag, which was 120 grams, uh, plus the contrasting color, which was a hundred gram cake. Uh, I had all that yarn in this bag plus the project itself and it fit in here fine. So the short size, um, ooh, that almost fell in my teeth. <laughs> the short size is a uh, great for socks and it will have extra room for cream. Nope. <laughs> um, and it's also great for shawls. Um, it'll be a little snug depending on the size of the shawl. If it's a rather large shawl, like the find your fade shawl, then you should go with the tall bag rather than the short. Okay. So, yeah, that's my little plug for myself. Shameless self-promotion. Okay. So, what else do we have going? Um, so, this is now going to be my sort of rambly section. I'm going to talk about running on this podcast. I'm going to save it for the end. And uh, that is going to start now. So uh, if you are only here for the knitting, then uh, thanks for coming and I'll see you next time. And if you want to stick around and hear about my running adventures, here we go. All right. So um, yeah, I... Let me give you guys a little bit, little background. So I enjoy running. Go figure. <laughs> I find it very meditative, um, stress relieving. I just, I feel really good when I do it and especially afterward. <laughs> um, yeah, I started running uh, for enjoyment in college. Uh, but in high school, I played lots of sports. I played basketball, volleyball, and soccer. So there was always lots of running. However, when I was in high school, I was really bad at it. Um, I have asthma and allergies, and the two don't play nice together. And, um, yeah. So volleyball was my favorite sport because you just sprint and fall and hit the ball. And there's not much running involved. Uh, but basketball and soccer. And they're two different kinds of running. Because in basketball, you do a lot of sprinting. And in soccer, you do a lot of, you know, long distance running. Yeah. So I didn't enjoy it in high school. It was a means to an end. Uh, but when I got into college, I really liked running for some reason. Um, 
I think it's because I didn't need a whole team in order to play. I could do it on my schedule when I had time. Um, and it was an adventure that I would go on. Um, like I said, I went to school at Northern Michigan University, which is in Marquette, Michigan, which is right on Lake Superior. <sighs> Gorgeous. So I would run along the lake. There's a wonderful paved, um, walking, biking path, and I would run along that, and it was gorgeous. So it was a way for me to get out of the house to see the scenery. Um, I would run around town as well on the roads. So I got to know, um, I got to become more familiar with the town itself, where everything was, what the street names were, um, and be able to pay attention to that more when I'm running rather than when I'm driving. Because when you're driving, you have to pay attention to things like stop signs and stop lights and is there a pedestrian in the road and you can't really spend time looking at what shops are on this road and what's this street name so uh yeah i found running to be my it, my way to explore uh but also to get in some exercise and i still feel that way about it today so what i like to do is go out and run um and when I build up enough distance, I'll start trying to explore new areas and trying to run down different roads or different parts of town. Uh, yeah, so it's my little escape from my world. It's my 20 minutes to an hour of just me time and seeing things I might not have seen otherwise. I have captured some photos of some weird things that I was in the right place at the right time seeing this weird thing, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, and I've also been in the wrong place at the wrong time and almost been bitten by stray dogs. So there's that side too. But anyway, <laughs> it's my little escape and my adventure. So I enjoy it. So, um... We are in Texas. I am from Michigan and I do still have allergies and asthma. So it's something that will never go away, but I can always try to make more manageable. And one way that I make my asthma more manageable is actually by doing cardio and trying to push my lungs to become stronger uh, and to grow. So it's weird because Exercise will induce my asthma, but exercise will also reduce my asthma. I don't know. It's, it's this weird balance. Anyway, I just have to listen to my body, push myself, but not too hard. And that Goldilocks area of things is so hard to figure out at first. But I've been doing this long enough that I have figured out how to listen to my body. So, <laughs> uh, this summer has been crazy hot. You hear about it all the time on all these podcasts. Um, I've been hearing it too with all the podcasts I've been watching. Uh, this summer was hot and West Texas was no exception to the heat wave. So there was no way I was going to go running outside in 80, 90, 100 degree weather not happening. Uh, and here we usually have cloudless skies with lots of sun. Uh, right now it's very cloudy and might start to rain, which is, which is really cool, but I'm sorry for the lighting. Okay. So it has cooled down now a little bit. Uh, like I said, it is humid because it has been raining. So, mm, that doesn't help. But I've been getting outside and being able to get some runs in, which feels really good. Uh, we do have a treadmill here at the house, which really helps when it is 80, 90, 100 degrees outside. <laughs> so I can still run, but because it's inside on a treadmill, it's not the same. I'm not getting that escape. I'm not going on an adventure. 
I'm just running in a room in front of a television. So, um, yeah, I kind of have two different types of running. I have running on the treadmill where I'm getting in some TV time or I'm getting in some reading time. And it's more about multitasking, that instead of sitting on the couch reading my book, I'll run on the treadmill while reading my book and try to multitask that exercise. Uh, but when I go outside, I'm going on an adventure. And the only way I can go on this adventure is if I'm running. So it motivates me. Anyway. <laughs> So that's my background. That's that's my little story about about running and what it is to me. And uh, and yeah, I I enjoy it. So that is my exercise of choice. So this week uh, I only got in three miles, but I haven't been running consistently throughout the summer. So. <sighs> I really want to break this habit where I run, 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 and then I take like three months off. Then I have to start from scratch again. So I'm hoping that by talking about it on the podcast, it will motivate me to keep going and not to stop. Because you guys are really big motivators. Like every week I want to show you new knitting, new patterns, new stuff all the time. And it super motivates me. So if I talk about my running on the podcast, it might motivate me to keep going with it. So, um, yeah, so one mile was spent on the treadmill and two miles were spent outside. Um, yeah, I didn't see anything exciting nothing at all. Uh, I did almost get, well, that was last week. Last week I went running outside as well and almost got hit by a car and almost got bit by a dog both times. Well, the first time it was that I almost got hit by a car. Second time it was that I almost got bit by a dog. So that wasn't very <laughs> motivating to start with. <laughs> But, yeah, this week was good. Uh, I went in the morning, and, you know, the sun is starting to come up, and it's just, it's just really pretty in the morning. So, that was nice. <laughs> so, yeah, I got in three miles this week, which is really good for coming back from nothing. So... There is that. Um, I'm not counting my walking mileage in this just because it's not the same. <laughs> I mean, it burns calories, but it doesn't. I don't walk at the cardio level. I just walk to get from here to there, and that's it. Um, and if I'm walking on the treadmill, I'm knitting while I'm doing it. And the last thing I want are sweaty hands when I'm knitting. So that's that. Anyway. Uh, so that wraps up this episode. It sounds like maybe Michael is getting home from the store. So I'm going to help him unpack the car. And I will hopefully see you guys next weekend. <laughs> happy knitting. Happy reading, running, whatever else it is you like to do. And I'll see you next week. Bye, guys. So I wanted to show you guys I just finished unpacking the groceries out of the car. <laughs> and I'm sitting down to edit the podcast and yeah, it's raining. So <laughs> um in case I didn't say this before, uh when it rains in Texas it pours. So in fact it's not so bad right now. I would I would consider this raining, but um yeah, it's coming down pretty well, so you can see the grass is really green, and my trees have leaves on them, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, the rainwater just pours off the roof, so the grass close to the house just gets flooded, but yeah, it's good.
So I'm going to sit inside, enjoy my tea, listen to the rain, and finish up editing this podcast for you guys. Ha, <laughs>